This is Jeremy Haney, a special effects artist and sculptor. You are watching Already Indie, where you are a filmmaker. Okay, well that was funny. Uh, as a matter of being in the right place at the right time with the right car, um, I was uh, actually I was out at a club, a golf club, one night. And like the night I got a call from a reality show that needed the back of a whale um, by 7:30 in the morning uh, for a show about uh, people who survive animal attacks, and it was going to be a, rec a recreation of the a whale hitting a boat. Not remember, it's being shot at the Fantasy Three stage, which has a huge tank. So I'm like, okay, sure. So, you yeah, know, 2.30, the club closes, and I go back to the shop, and I make the damn thing. 7 o'clock rolls around, and I couldn't fit it in my hearse. So I tied it to the top of the hearse and drove it over. And so when I pulled up with a hearse with a whale on top, and my makeup's all smeared and fed and latex, and I said, whose fucking whale is this? And they thought that was hilarious. So I said, okay, we're going to do a show about you. I'm like, yeah, right. And then they did. <laughs> so, I think that never happens to me. It was like 15 shops trying to get a show going at that time. And uh, I won't say that, you know, the weird factor didn't help, but, you know, also it's because of my family being, working with me and our personalities that really uh, nailed it. But yeah, we did a pilot, uh, which was the, we did a sizzle reel, so I, I liked it, and then we did a pilot for them, which was the shark. And uh, then we did the show. Well, face off, I think, you know, that's a slight, that's a kind of different deal in a way because it's a competition show, but, you know, people, I think, you know, really do love the old school um, practical effects, and, which is funny because they're on, we're on Sci-Fi Channel, which has the worst, worst offenders when it comes to the shittiest CD movies we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, I hope they're paying attention. But uh, part of it has to do with the fact that you see, in our show, it's a process show. You see something being made. Uh, a lot of extra drama is thrown in that, you know, I personally would rather leave out. But uh, they figure that's what drives the show in the, you know, in the reality world. I don't watch television. I had my mind turned on two days before for my show later. So that's my, you know, but, uh, so I really don't know what I think Boo is yet, but I'm here to find out. But yeah, it was, uh, because it is a process show, but people just kind of caught on. A lot of it was just the, uh, you know, craziness, the uh, deadlines, which are very real. Um, and uh, I tried to keep it like a very different creature and different build each week, so it was always something, you know, something new. And people actually, I was worried that a lot of the stuff we were doing wouldn't come across. People wouldn't be able to figure out what the hell we were doing because of all the extra drama and shit. I thought, we're going to need a glossary underneath what we're saying. But no, actually people seem to figure it out. I, I, I have a great production company, Dirty Productions, State on the Shark Week. They did a great job on the show. They really like captured my family's back and yeah, we really are that bad. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Of course, the first three days they had some director warm in the back like we were a family feud, all high five and shit. Fuck no. <laughs> Hell no. I had to come out of my office for three days and that director left. So. Tony lit the thing, 
And just I saw it on the monitor, it just was like, oh my god, that's a monster now. It looked amazing the way he lit it and shot it. First thing was he'd seen the pilot, they showed him a little bit of the show, and he related completely because he saw it was a father daughter story. Yeah, a little violence. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, but he, he related to that with his relationship with his daughter and stuff, so it was like, like I said, Tony is fucking great. I love the guy. When he came in and I had a pile of crap sitting there to show him instead of, you know, any finished pieces, first like, uh-huh. And then I just started showing him just what I was saying, my enthusiasm, he just totally saw it and picked up on it. The biggest lion? Uh, uh, oh, fuck, Mike Mendez. That guy was a jackass. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I mean, he was just sitting there waiting to say that line. Oh, it's a bad day for practical effects, you know, whatever. What happened there was, because if you saw the show, the bug that I built, the spider, looked really good sitting there and could have been puppeted, you know, in if he gave me five minutes to set it up, but he only gave me two. And what happened was the first day of shooting on that film, Mega uh, Mac Spider, uh, everything went great. Second day, everything went wrong. And we, didn't, we weren't even late that day. Uh, we got there and sat there for like six hours waiting to shoot. And I saw the extras all sitting there, and there, and there was a hospital scene in their car being told by the AD, we are going to get to you. Nothing went right that day, so we were just the icing on the cake. When we got in there, it was already pissed off, you know, and treated us like crap and all of that. You know. And he was itching to use the CGI, wasn't he? What? Was he itching to use the CGI on the Well, yeah, because he's you know, a younger generation who doesn't. The old rule used to be in film, on your first movie, don't use um, children or animals. You know, it's children and animals or practical effects. You know, and everybody's so used to the whole we'll fix it in post, you know, attitude. Uh, they don't want to take the time to set stuff up. But you know, if it's having that thing physically there it would have worked fine if he just shot it. You know, just shot it, and shot it. You know. Okay. Your specialty is in fabrication. Hi, uh, I am a fab. Yeah, my phone fabrication is like my specialty, which I did not know was even uh, an element of special effects when I started out because I was grew up in Florida. And it was materials available to me, uh, was foam, and I construct stuff out of it, and huge things and puppets and all this crap. And I thought, oh, well, I get to LA, and it's going to be all the effects and shit I'm going to learn. And I, no, first place I went, uh, my effects labs, opened my book, you do foam fabrication, you're hired, bam. I'm like, okay. And I've been doing it ever since. What yeah. was the first that thing you made out of foam? Oh, the first thing I got the whole suit. Got the yeah, so 76 for convention in Texas, so I won the contest. And then somebody from Six Flags Over Texas saw it and won one, and I've been doing it ever since. And I was a junior in high, in high school then, so the only reason I even made it to my graduation was because I couldn't get a plane out of Detroit on Memorial Day. So I came back a day early and said, no graduation tonight. I figured I'd show up. And I never got my diploma because I never gave them a self-addressed name. Nobody's ever asked me for it. But kids, don't listen to me. Stay in school. <laughs> Charlie, good job, old boy.